Good morning, Leah. Hi, Allison. How are you today? Good. It is so nice to see you because this is actually an instance where we have not, I mean, we weren't on the show together last week and then you weren't at work this week. So I don't know. It's been over a week since we last act, spoke. So right? yeah, it's, it's been a while, which is very unusual because during the course of a normal week, we speak multiple times. No, yeah. And actually, even this week, I spoke at you many times because you had a lot of emails for me, but. I, so. will, I will get to them eventually. I started wading through my email as I came back, but um, I'm not all the way done yet. No, so. there's certainly no rush. And a lot of them are just like, heads up, I'm doing this because you're not here. <laughs> so let me know. <laughs> I, it's already done, but this is what we're doing. Um, <laughs> just keep me in the loop. You make decisions without me. I don't care. That, <laughs> right. that makes my life easier. Right. The fewer decisions I have to make, the happier I seem to be for well, some yeah. reason. <laughs> sure. And when you come back and you have all these things you have to like decide on, it's easier to just come back to the emails. It's like, I withdrew this or I ordered a new one or I, you know, then it's just already taken care of. We're just kicking exactly. out. <laughs> you, you go ahead and do that. And let me know what you did and I'll. <laughs> that is a big mug of coffee this morning. Well, it is my first day back in a week, so I need it. I was here last Friday, and I, I, I have been off work since then, and then today's my first day back, so wow. this is my I second had, one of these. <laughs> yes. I had a tragedy earlier this week, tragedy, uh, wherein I forgot my thermos at home, and I use this like same metal, I use this thermos of coffee that I bring every day. It keeps it hot for a long time. I make my coffee at home in a coffee pot. I make lots of it exactly how I like it. And I left on the counter and I got to work and I could have cried. And I was talking to my coworkers, like, I feel like I would handle a real trial or trouble much better than handling that. It's not so much I would be that dramatic about anything, but it was just it would, you know, I just, and we have a Keurig at work. I made some coffee there, but it's not the same. It's it wasn't not the same. It's, and it wasn't my mug. <laughs> right. Yes. One day last week when I was working, um, I was, you know, in my rush to get out of the house in the morning because I'm not a morning person. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. um, in my rush to get out of the door, I left my thermos of coffee sitting on my coffee table. And I was, I got to work and I'm like, maybe it's in my car. I texted my mom. I'm like, is the coffee at home? And she's like, yes, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> well, it's just going to, you know, if I can't drink it. She might as well. I know. <laughs> but but it just seems so sad. Yeah. Oh, man. So did you do anything fun on your week off? Um, yeah, I did lots of stuff. Um, I went to a moth event where I saw moths, you know, the, not butterflies, but the, the nighttime creatures. I'm working on arranging my face into something that, great, that's cool. Yeah, I'm in Hocking Hills, Logan. Um, yeah. Butterfly Ridge is like a little okay. area down there, but they do a moth event. So you go at nighttime. Um, they do it Saturday nights all through the summer, except for the first Saturday of the month. So June through August, okay. um, Saturday nights, um, you hike up this hill and they have got a, like a white sheet up and with light mm -hmm. shining on it, which attracts yeah. the moths. And there are all these different moths. And there was this rosy maple moth that was yellow and pink. Um, some of them were actually look more like yellow and purple, uh, but most of them were yellow and pink and they were just beautiful. That's cool. Um, Morning, there Carrie. was hi Carrie. There was also a Luna moth, but we left too soon, so we didn't get to see the Luna moth. Those mm -hmm. are really cool. Um, and then <laughs> and you can look at all the bugs that collect on my front porch when I leave my porch light on, and then I have to battle them to try to get in my house and say, Why did I leave this light on? Right? I've always wondered the 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 light is on like the one side where like the screen door opens if they put it on the other Why? side where it yes. doesn't open it would make so much more sense because it's a, it's a screen door it's not like it's blocking the light you can still right. see to put your key in but yeah. then moths don't fly in like duh Why? I've 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 had this argument with people multiple times but they're like but that's where it's supposed to be I'm like but that's stupid it is stupid. Um, anyway, continue. What other kind of cool moths did you see? I'm sorry, I interrupted. Um, well, I, I saw some other cool moths, but I don't remember any of their names because I'm not a moth expert. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> but I've got books at the library that could identify them. I'm um, sure. I also will. know a couple people who've done programs for me in the past who could have helped me identify them. But um, I also went and went to Art and Clay mm -hmm. and I painted something. So in a few days, I'll get to pick that up and see how well you it actually it turned out. When you get it, will you bring it on the show? Um, maybe, <laughs> depending on how it turns out. <laughs> Real architecture and design talk with Allison and Leah, right? You know what? I think Alice and I could probably and just make the world 10% better if they just listen to us. Just a little bit better. All, all topics. We have opinions and they we have, have, lots, of, right? we have lots of opinions, lots of ideas, very little uh, way to make them happen, but right. we do have the ideas. Yes. I, still loving the adopted debtor. I know, adopted debtor. That. We have shared that on here before. And <laughs> as anyone who wants to make that app, you can use us as uh, you can use us as like a trial. You just put our information in there, and uh, if someone could adopt us and help us <laughs> with our debt, that would be great. Yes, yes, adopted debtor. Um, um, well, I'm, that sounds fun. I do hope you bring whatever you made on the show so we can see it. Okay, I, I can do that <laughs> as long as it's a, appropriate for the show. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I painted a um, a little mouse holding a mushroom. Oh. And um, Carrie painted a, a rubber duck. So. Oh, wonderful. So we'll see how we'll see how those turn out. Wonderful. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, was off. I was gone. <laughs> it was fine. I was also playing catch up because I was off last Friday to go to Virginia to my brother's mm -hmm. wedding. And that was lovely and wonderful. And you're all a captive audience. So I'm gonna tell you about it. Although I guess you're not, you can just close this out or mute me. That's fine, go for it. But it was lovely. Um, it was just like on the, in this, the family stayed in um, this big old house just out. I mean, very rural area in Virginia. And then um, there was just this sloping backyard that had, um, that butted up against this like grassy field. And so they got married out there and, um, you know, there were sun and big puffy white clouds and butterflies floating by while they read their vows. And so it was very lovely. Um, it was it was a really wonderful day. And they were so, you know, young and happy. And it and was just love. happy. Yes. Exactly. Everyone was so happy for them. She was wearing this uh, vintage 70s dress that she had modified a little bit. And it looked wonderful on her, this vintage tiara thing. Oh. Um, my brother had a custom made like bottle green suit um, and it was it was wonderful. So I'm really, really happy I got the chance to go to that. I'm really happy for them and for me that the way COVID fell, this was able to happen. Yeah. Um, and the trip was great. I had anticipated rain and was very nervous about it, but it turned out everything was fine. So I'm surprised. Um, <laughs> and then, was it the caverns nearby? No, there was no time for anything. <laughs> Other than wedding, which is okay, and what I anticipated. If I'd taken more time off, I could have done something like that. But um, honestly, by the time I, by the time I got home, I mean there was the drive, and like I drive like this, and like really tense, and like <laughs> when I drive. So physically, um, that that is so more right. full on me, perhaps than other people. Um, and then just that like emotional energy investment yeah. of yeah, and, you know, preparing for the wedding, pulling the chairs out, doing all that stuff. Um, by the time I got home, I was so tired. And Monday, I took Monday off and I kept like falling asleep on Monday. It was sort of like after I got my COVID vaccine, I was just like so tired. That's yeah. how I felt that this yeah. time to sore from the drive, sore from dancing. Um, it was fun. It was a great weekend. Oh, I, you said dancing and that just, I had a flashback to our, our night out dancing. <laughs> I'm, that's, all I'm really gonna say. that's all I'm going to say. Um, we, and yeah. we, we need to do that again soon. I know now that we're able to do that. Right. There's just yeah. very, everybody in the comments, there's just very few opportunities as an adult, especially just like, I don't know, as an adult to go dancing, especially yes. when you don't live in a place with right. like, you know, avenues to do that. So. <laughs> DJ Milk Dud, who I I I told him he was a dud. So 
Um, <laughs> probably not welcome back, actually. And now we probably have one less place to go. Right. So. But really, and the, yeah. I, he played a Let's song I didn't it. like, and I would not let Allison dance. She wanted to dance. Yeah. I'm like, no, stand still. We're not dancing to this song. I don't like this song. I did. <laughs> Speaking of, of being told not to dance or to dance, um, the DJ at the, my brother's wedding was great um, and everything was wonderful, except we were caught in what I consider to be a cha-cha slide purgatory. That song went on for so, so long. And I don't normally dance that, but just, I mean, I'm there, you know, so I was, and the girl I was like, you know, hanging out with, uh, dancing with, she was like, we were, we're like, we're going to die here. This is going to be it. Like this, it's like an episode of Black Mirror and we're never going to stop doing the cha-cha slide. And the number of hops just kept going up and up and up. And the people who were outside at the time, because there was an indoor outdoor part, they were like, yeah, we hear that in there. I don't, I've never heard it go that long. <laughs> yeah. Like there, there are some things that you get into and you're just like, is it ever going to end? I'm still doing right foot, left foot. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Um, I was just I'm glad we both good. had a good time off. We got to do some we yeah. got to do some fun things that we haven't done. I mean, you know, that haven't wouldn't have been an opportunity a few months ago. Right. Yeah. It was it was good to get out. I you know, I got to do some other things too. Um last night I visited the washboard fest down in Logan and um I, I you know, I was out in the crowd, so I'm like, you know what, I'm wearing my mask. Even though I've got my vaccine, I don't like people, mm -hmm. but you know, it wasn't so crowded that you were like close to people the whole time. Like standing in food lines, you got a little bit close, but then you just kind of like turn away from people and you wear your mask. So it was okay. It was, it was, Fine. it was good to get out. And like you said, two months ago, I couldn't have imagined doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Things are changing. It's okay. crazy. So I have to ask Allison, since you had a nice long drive down to the wedding, did yeah. you listen to any audiobooks? We're going to transition into talking about what our post was supposed to actually be. Right? Um, yeah. I, I did. I that smoothly, but it, you, you called me out on it. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm just, I'm so aware. You know how much I love a transition and a segue. I just have to appreciate them audibly, which ruins them. Um, I also like to point out why a joke is funny. No. <laughs> um, I, I did. On my way there, I finished In the Woods by Tana French. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I enjoyed it, but I, and we can get more into this, but the narrator to me sounded too old. It was, it's a first person narration, like a lot of her books mm -hmm. are. And he was supposed to sound kind of like posh because he went to this boarding school, but the voice sounded kind of like a distinguished, like 50 year old man to me. Like, and when I listened to um, The Witch Elm, that near, it, like that narrator really seemed to fit that character. He yes. was, you know, mm -hmm. he's not the right age. And this guy just didn't completely, and that threw it off for me. Yes. And, that, um, yeah. I have a huge problem when the narrator doesn't sound like the character. Like yeah. the way the character is described and the, what you know about the character. Mm -hmm. The... Outlander series. Mm -hmm. um, I love those books by Diana Gabaldon. Um, they're all narrated by the same woman. And it works for the later books because, you know, time has passed and Claire is yeah. older. Yeah. The very first book and for parts of the second book, she sounds like an old woman. Yeah. She, al she always sounds much older than the character herself. Yeah. But it, it's not as bad like when Claire's 50 to have this older narrator. Right. But yeah. you know, when Claire's 28 and you've got this old woman voice, it just doesn't work for me. And it's, yeah. it, it brings you out of the story, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's just, it, it doesn't fit. And yeah. you're constantly aware of the fact that it doesn't fit. Yes. And I actually, you're going to know this one too. But I, unfortunately, was not even able to listen to Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I was very excited to listen to that. And I'm just going to have to read it because that woman sounds like a grandmother. It sounds, and she has a grandmother, but it doesn't really make sense that the grandmother would be narrating the story. And I don't, even if it were just like a neutral female voice, but it's clearly a, an older yes. woman. Yeah. And again, yeah, 
the story were narrated by the grandmother. And thankfully, this one is a third person narrator. So it's not I, 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 which would be unfathomable. But <gasps> Andrea, how could you be tardy? <laughs> tardy. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning. <laughs> That's funny. Good morning, Andrea. Um, but it just, it's confusing. If it were just like a neutral narrator, that'd be fine. But when she does voice, she does voices for the different sisters and stuff. And some of them, when she does that voice, it sounds like she's putting on an even older voice. <laughs> like the person sounds even older. And so yeah. I think I'm just gonna because I, I but I liked what I listened to of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think, so I think I'm gonna just have to read the book though because it just made me frustrated to listen to. <laughs> yeah, I I really really dislike that. Yeah. Um, and I, I've listened to books where they've done like, like multiple narrators. I read this one book. Um, there was a series of books. And in the series, there was always like two male characters and a female character. Mm -hmm. um, like they're like the main three characters mm -hmm. in a book. So there was one narrator doing both male characters and mm -hmm. one narrator doing the female character. And then you got to like the third or fourth book in the series, I don't even remember. And instead of it being told from the uh, those two male and one female perspective, it was told from three male perspectives. And they still had two men narrating it. And I'm just like, that that doesn't work. You can't have three male yeah. characters and two male narrators. It just it was so confusing, and I kept getting the yeah. the, the, the characters confused. Yeah. Yeah, when I listen to when I listened to the Bromance Book Club, which I still will publicly say I didn't I did enjoy that book. Um, <laughs> that had two male narrators because one was the represented the the male in the book, mm -hmm. and then the other one was the narrator of the romance novel they were reading. And the romance like he read those portions because the romance they read was like a regency romance, and he was like a lord or a viscount or whatever. And so he was like this. British voice okay. and uh, and ever, and so whenever they had a passage from that book, it was read by that guy. And when I saw it, it had two male narrators, I'm like, well, that doesn't make like why are there two male narrators? Is not one of these men is not going to read for the woman, right? And mm -hmm. um and then sometimes when like the man was uh, the main character in present day, the real character, um you know he would be like conflicted about something he would hear the the count or whatever in his head and so like that voice would like drop in and so that I thought that was a fun feature I wasn't expecting I figured that book would be just one narrator and so it is kind of fun when they can find other ways to throw it in but um that is very cute the confusion there especially like midway through the series why yeah yeah, yeah I, they had done it like the whole series but when when it, when they switched the point it was just yeah, very and Andrea, yes, I have listened to the host by Stephanie Meyer, and I agree with you that Kate Redding is fabulous. She she is really a wonderful narrator. Um, I've I've listened to a couple other books by her. It's one of those I always forget which narrators I like until I hear them again, and it's like, oh, I know this one. You know, it's yeah, it's yeah, that 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 you know, and you're you're just like, oh, an old friend. Right. Yeah. Well, and that book was so much better than the movie. I was very, when the movie came out, I was so excited and I was just like, oh, and then I, I, I was so disappointed when I watched it. But the book, I have, I have read the book a couple of times and I've listened to it. Um, and I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you that that is, um, you're listening to someone else right now and I love it. Um, I love that audiobook, the host. So yeah. what is the series that you uh what's the other series that she narrates that you're listening yeah. to? If you're not hearing, if it is for some reason embarrassing or you don't want to share your that's yeah. also okay. you don't have to. That's that's fine. Um, <laughs> I announced that I read the Bromance Book Club on a public live forum. Although what's been happening, okay. so this contemporary you're, romance, you're intentionally expanding your reading. Yes. Um, and, it is new to me since this pandemic is like mm -hmm. I didn't really read any contemporary romance until the pandemic. And um, <clears throat> so at work, you know, we work at the library. So when we put things on hold, like mm -hmm. one of your coworkers is like giving it to you or checking it in for you or something like that. So my coworkers have now had to understand and learn that I'm reading contemporary romance. So like when my tech <laughs> services coworker is processing new material, she's like, 
oh, well, this has a hold on it for you. And I'm like, it does. You're right. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't there. Um, so I've had to, I've had to learn to be open about it because, uh, you know, I always claim, oh yeah, there was something I needed to fix on that one. <laughs> Oh, right, right, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. That was there was one point in time when I was I was calling in older editions of, um, oh, what is that that pregnancy book? Um, what to Expect When You're Expecting? Yes. Uh -oh. we, had got, we had ordered uh, the new edition. So yeah. I was calling in older editions from the branches. And it's like, I got, I got like six copies of What to Expect When You're yeah. Expecting. And I'm just like, I... I'm not pregnant, people. Right. But yes, there were some 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 looks that week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, and it's fine. And again, I wouldn't shame anybody else for what they read, but it is, you know, I'm at work and it's, yeah. you know. It's like so they know you. So and yeah. It, and it's called like, you know, accidentally engaged or something. And <laughs> um, so when you were talking about narrators, I had, I did check out, I saw this article. Um, there's a magazine called, where is it? Called Audiophile Magazine. Um, mm -hmm. And they give out like a golden voices. They give out these golden voices awards to audiobook narrators. And the 2021 people, um, I'm not familiar with any of them really, was Cassandra Campbell who wrote or who read where the crawdads sing among other things and they said that they really like her historical fiction voice I, I've, um, I've definitely heard her before that name okay. is really, although i couldn't tell you what but yeah yeah and then um michael crouch and then oh my handwriting sunila nankani she does um a lot of different things but one of the things she does is romance uh by sonali dev that you've probably seen pride and prejudice and other flavors and recipe for persuasion she does these jane austen okay uh, contemporary indian adaptations yes. um and I oh, i've not read any of them or i've never read them either but they involve cooking and jane austen so i'm not sure where you could really go wrong with it but she yeah. narrated those so I, and she won like i said a golden voice award this year from audiophile magazine so i may check out one of those audio versions of her rom of those rom-coms because yeah. it sounds good to me so anyway when you're talking about not knowing who you know knowing your favorite narrators if you go to audiophile magazine well google it i'm not sure what the website is audiophilemagazine.com whatever it is, um, and look through their lists of narrators. I bet you could find some good ones, especially the people who may have won the awards mm -hmm. you know, in previous years. So just a recommendation. One of the things that I really love about Hoopla is when I go in there, and I and I use Hoopla for audiobooks a lot, simply because there's no waiting, and that mm -hmm. I love. Um, but if, if I like a narrator, you can click on a narrator mm -hmm. and go to a list of like, there are other audiobooks that they've narrated. And I found a lot of books that way just by, you know, I'm like, oh, I like yeah. this narrator's voice. I want to listen to him. Yeah. Too. yeah. You can do that on Overdrive as well. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you I just. I wasn't sure if they were clickable in Overdrive, but yeah. What? I wasn't sure if they were clickable in Overdrive. I've never done yeah, You just click it and then you can see everything else because I did that with In the Woods and I was like, I can't listen to any more of this series if this guy's narrating it. Um, yeah. And so I checked and he's not. So I may, may in the future, we'll see. Yeah. So we have some comments. Andrea yeah. says that if you like sci-fi and want to listen to a book where the narrator really makes it, read Columbus Day by Craig Allenson. It is incredible. Okay. And then also off off to Be the Wizard by Scott Meyer, read by Luke Daniels, is also great and a really funny sci-fi book. Thank you for those recommendations. Yes. We don't have a lot of sci-fi to recommend on here usually. <laughs> no, sci-fi is not one of those genres that I read a lot. Um, although I, when I do, I really like it, so I don't know why I read it. It's mm -hmm. just one of those things. I just, I, I think maybe I don't think to search them out. Mm -hmm. That's, and it's like the last, it's all the way at the back that <laughs> the books that are like, oh, I don't want yeah. to walk all the way back there. No way. <laughs> yeah, I like to um I like the sci-fi that's a little bit more like speculative fiction or a little bit more like genre bending. Mm -hmm. If it's just kind of straight sci-fi, it's less of an interest yeah. to me. But um or like yeah, space okay. related sci-fi, which I know I know Andrea, this will make her uh cover her ears, but I don't really like space related sci-fi all that much. <laughs> um I like the more on earth, this could really happen it's just like one tick further than where we're at now or whatever but 
So as long as Andrea keeps, you know, watching, she can make right. all the sci-fi wrecks and we don't have to worry about it. And she's currently listening to the new Andy Weir book, um, Project Hail Mary. Um, and because of specific things about the book, you must listen to it. The narrator is Ray Porter. Uh, ooh, I'm going to have to listen to that one. Wow. I really, I really like it when the narrator like makes the book you mm -hmm. like you know it just <sighs> one of the 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 books that i listened to and loved the most and like star girl mm -hmm. by um Mary Spinelli. Spinelli. yeah um it's you know it's it's a it's a book for you know oh, like yeah. tweens probably maybe even younger yeah. and but it's told from the like the perspective of the boy like looking back later on like what had happened so it's like told from like his adult self talking about this this summer mm -hmm. or the school year with when star girl was there so the narrator was john ritter mm -hmm. and just like his voice is just it's fabulous you know and it just gives you that sense of like familiarity and comfort and just it was so good. I loved that book. And like I said, it's a kid's book, but it was just like, it was perfect. His voice was perfect. For yeah. Yeah. I've never listened to it, but I read it. We'll discuss our age differences here. I read it when it came out, ordered it from the <laughs> book order. Um, <laughs> but, um, and so, yeah, I am about to burst your bubble about the uh, Project Hail Mary. It's an Audible original, so the library will never have it because Amazon Amazon sucks. Hold on to those Audible exclusives very tightly, and they do not make them available for libraries or to bookstores or for anybody to purchase unless you have an Audible subscription. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I linked Mary, Mary from the library. I sent you an email like immediately before we started this with another <laughs> link. Um, it's a slightly, it's an article from a year ago, but it's just why it, it's an article about why that's, I forget what the title is, but just why it's a bad thing that these Audible exclusives can never be made available, you know, all the impacts that that has. Um, so if you want to post that there, and then I remember when we had our last audiobook discussion a year ago, I mentioned Cory Doctor's article mm -hmm. about advocating for authors to unlink themselves from Audible. Um, yes. Maybe make more money that way, but well, he, he speculates that a lot of authors don't understand. You know, they're just, you know, they pick the best deal and they don't get it. And so mm -hmm. it's an, uh, an article from Cory Doctor about that. And I remember mentioning that the last time we talked about this. So yes. that's actually in the article from Libro F FM that I sent to Mary, who will put it in the comments. Um, at the bottom of that, there's a link to that article too. Again, it's a year old. Unfortunately, I don't believe there have been any developments in that time. <laughs> but there, the only development with Amazon is that they they have started tentative small step making ebooks available. They have only made up the Digital Public Library of America. Um, you they have started making their ebooks available to them and they've got a certain special platform that you have to use um like simple e or e, some, something like that and so they're making their ebooks available but not the the audible audiobooks those are yeah. still very tightly held they want that 15 dollars a month or whatever um i don't i don't even know how much the subscription is because i refuse to have one i think it's 14.99 <laughs> yeah but it's it's i listen to way too many books in a month to to be able to afford audible like i just i i simply because I think you only get like so many with that, and then you have to pay for more. I think. Well, you would only you could still use the library stuff. You would just be paying extra for those exclusives. Yeah. You wouldn't, but you know. So yeah. Well, that, and the other cool thing about those Audible originals and Audible exclusives and why they are so exclusive is because a lot of times they get celebrity narrators and like you know big deal people to read the books, and um, it sounds really cool. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. I don't blame anyone for subscribing to that because it, I mean, those are really great versions and editions. And when I uh, looked up the most recent Audi awards, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's spelled like the yeah. car, but with an E on the end. What? I think, I, I think they're Audi awards. Okay. Just, Audi yeah. awards. Um, I just sounds like Audi like the car. Audi awards. Um, those books, 
like the top titles there are a lot of them are audible exclusives and it's hard to deny that they would be really great i mean this year one of the um the best male male narrator went to Lawrence Fishburne for narrating the autobiography of Malcolm X. That was right. probably really great. Um, mm -hmm. and all those, you know, many of those top people, it, undeniably, that's probably worth your fifteen dollars to listen to. But I, and you know, it'd be much better if they could share it with libraries in some way, even yeah. if there were a delay. You know, I mean, I think we'd be happy to get it, even if there were a a window where it was exclusive and then it was given to libraries. Yeah, I just. It's it's really disappointing though when publishers don't make their content available to libraries. And mm -hmm. I, I get it. Amazon is out to make money, so mm -hmm. they keep it exclusive. But it just it's really disappointing because libraries are all about access and sharing mm -hmm. and making everyone available everything available to everyone. And some people don't abide by that philosophy. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you see, I did not write this down, so I don't have all the information handy, but just since we're talking about that, um, Dave Eggers' new book that's coming out, the hardback is only going to be available in independent books, bookstores. Yes. Um, yeah. he, he'll release the paperback. <laughs> he'll release the paperback to everybody mm -hmm. Amazon and stuff, but independent bookstores are only going to get the hardback version, which is pretty cool. And I think it also has like special covers, like it's going to come mm -hmm. in a variety of colors. That's or great. Yeah. Covers are going to be yeah. different. They're going to be like, what was it, like 16 or 32? I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember how many, but yeah, it's coming out in a variety of colors that are just going to be random when they show. Yeah, ship. that's really cool. Um, so that that was really interesting. I, I, mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting and especially that, you know, independent li independent bookstores are so important. But then <laughs> libraries like the hardback, they hold up better. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. But I understand because if they they can't yeah. just give it to libraries, they would be giving it to a massive book vendor that also sells to. So I, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andrea, we had some other things. Andrea recommended Shit Actually by Lindy West, which I had read in print last year. It was really, really, really funny. And she listened to the audio narrated by Lindy West and said it was wonderful. She also recommends R.C. Bray as a great narrator that she follows from book to book. Um, and then also she clarifies it's $14.95 for a credit and an audible and a credit equals a book. But then your other books are discounted. So, you know, um, and she did call Audible a jerk, even though, of course, she enjoys their services, which I again, I don't blame anybody for that. That sounds like they're great titles. Um, and if I didn't spend all my money on streaming services. Perhaps I might spend my money on Audible, <laughs> but I got I got all the Netflix, the Hulu, the HBO. You can either watch, you can spend your time watching or listening. You can right. Yeah. And I have a lot of options from the library that so far have satisfied me for for listening. But the streaming, I just I gotta have my Real Housewives, and that doesn't come to DVD. And I just <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we're we're over our time. Was there anything else you definitely wanted to talk about? Um, I just, just because I was interested, yeah. I pulled some numbers. Um, oh, yeah. As you know, we, we have both Hoopla and Overdrive for downloadable audio. Um, and it's easier to pull uh, statistics from those than it is from um, Polaris, which is for our physical items, how we keep track, because I'm yeah. at home, I haven't been to the library, so I can't pull those numbers <laughs> from home. I right. have to be at the library to get into that system. But for Hoopla, um, I was looking, and so far this year on Hoopla, we have circulated 2,956 audiobooks. That's great. Yes. And there's always, it's really, it's really funny looking at the statistics, because there's always an uptick in... December and January, and then again in June mm -hmm. and July, there's a nice uptick in, yeah. in circulation because you know people are traveling, so they get their audiobooks, and people are home at Christmas time. Yeah, so um, there's an uptick, or they just, like have just gotten devices, and yes. so they're, they're, they're trying them out. So yes, yes, yes. December and January, there's always a little bit of an uptick, and then again in June. Oh, that's great. But um, so far this year, from January first till today. 2,956 items circulated 
for us on Hoopla. That's wonderful. And on Overdrive for audiobooks. And that was audiobooks. Mm -hmm. um, for on Overdrive, we circulated 20,216 audiobooks this year. Um, as a consortium, like mm -hmm. all 17 yeah. or 18 libraries that are in that consortium, mm -hmm. we have circulated 851,100 audiobooks. Wow. Right? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Well, that's just through um, today. So we've got half the year ago. So our out. library was responsible for 20,000? 20,000 of those. That's yeah. great. I will say, I've done my I've done my time on Overdrive this year. I used to do I, Hoopla almost exclusively because it was always available. But since I've been looking for, when I look for specific yeah. all my specific books or series or narrators, mm -hmm. um, I've been on Overdrive more, like the Tana French books. Yes. I've been yeah. finding that, you know, things like that. Um, and I have all, that holds list there. So when something becomes available, I jump. I jump onto Overdrive, but I'm, I am listening on Hoopla. I guess I do have, um, I'm listening on Hoopla to um, The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I'm pretty sure I am like the last person to read, at least in the circles that I run in, which let me I tell you. Okay. It's on my list. It's very good. The audio, I would recommend the audio. The narrator on that is um, Daniel Henning. The author of House in the Cerulean Sea is TJ Klune. The new book coming out this fall called Under the Whispering Door that I know nothing about. But House in the Cerulean Sea, uh, the narrator does all kinds of voices, and it's and it's all on him because there's no war, anywhere in that text. There's no explanation of how people talk, but there's so many characters that he has to yeah. do stuff. There's like this like old New York, deep New York accent. There's like this posh British accent. The one <laughs> character who, and I can't believe I'm reading a book like this, but the one character who's made of like jellyfish type of material and is see through and has like eyes on stalks and tentacles. Mm -hmm. um he does i can't i mean i couldn't even begin but he does like this crazy cartoonish voice for that character um and so again none of that is spelled out he just has to yeah. read it and be like what does this person sound like there's a lawn gnome that has a voice um <laughs> and so it's very engaging and entertaining and i'm really enjoying listening to it um and like i said it was pretty big i think like last year last fall or something and um in the book circles that I run in, which as I said, are very, very expensive. Um, I thought everybody's read it. And um, so I it, I wanted to give it a try and I would recommend the audio for that if anyone is anyone is interested. Um, there's another book that I'm trying to think of a, something, Knife is in the title. Um, the Knife of Never Letting Go. Okay. Um, it's a really odd title. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't remember the author's name. Um, that book, in that in that book, um, they live in a world where um, you can hear other people's thoughts. You told us about this one, or you told me about this one. Yes. I don't know if you said it on here, so go ahead. But you did tell yeah, me you, about you, They live in this world where you can hear other people's thoughts. So part of the audio book at, at times, like you can hear like different voices thinking different things mm -hmm. and like we'll be able to pull out like one sentence, but there's also this muddled stuff in the back and they do, they do not do it throughout the whole book because that would just be overwhelming. Um, but they, they do do it at certain times. Patrick Ness. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, library. Um, the Knife of Never Letting Go, Patrick Ness. Cool. But, but they add that in there. So it kind of gives you a sense of like what the characters are you know the world they live in so mm -hmm. that i thought was really really interesting yeah um, and that's one of those elements like you could never experience that reading the book like you could say mm -hmm. oh we hear other people's thoughts but to actually get it coming in mm -hmm. i thought that was really yes. awesome yes uh one more thing before we go because i know mary posted this link we posted a link in the um comments that is to a quiz about like what audiobook you should listen to next. So we recommend that you take that, find that. It's from the posted by the library in the comments. Take your take your quiz and find out what audiobook you should read next. I got I should read a celebrity read audiobook and I love those. So that was a perfect fit for me. I got that as well. <laughs> so um, anyway. So. Did you have anything right. else? No, 
nope, nope. Well, we more than filled our time, which is not surprising to me since we both have <laughs> been together for two weeks. So and we both love audiobooks, so we do. I had this whole I had all of this, the all these were all books to talk about. I had this whole back page, most of which oh, I didn't wow. have. So maybe <laughs> yeah. to part maybe part two, maybe to be continued. Well, June is audiobook month, so we could talk about more next week. <laughs> well, we might have to because I really did. I really did have this nice long list. So anyway, we'll see what happens next week. We won't keep you an hour today. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, bye, guys. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you next week. Yes. See you next week. Bye-bye.